Hey guys, it's Alex, and I'm here once again with my monthly wrap-up. I read seven books in May, which I'm actually kind of pleased with. That's much lower than the 22 books that I read in April, but I got through some books that I really wanted to get through, and I feel like I kind of needed a reading break. I also read three books on the 1st of June that I'm going to be including in this wrap-up, just because I read them for the May Rereadathon prompt, and I kind of don't want to still be thinking about them once we get into July. The first book that I read in May was Never Tell by Lisa Gardner. This is an adult thriller about a woman who is found standing over the body of her dead husband. The police immediately assume that she did it, and an investigation ensues where we learn that everything is not quite as it seems. I gave this book three stars. I do really enjoy Lisa Gardner. I think if you're a fan of police procedurals, she's a good one to try. But her books really aren't anything spectacular or groundbreaking. They're just kind of solid police procedural reads, and three stars is probably my average for them. I did expect a little bit better from this book. I was hoping it'd be four, but overall, it was a fun read. I think its main detriment was that there was just a little bit too much going on. There were too many characters and too many plot lines, and it felt like it took a lot for all the different threads to combine at the end, and I just wasn't as invested as I wanted to be. But still a solid read, and I'll continue reading all her new releases as they come out each year. The second book that I read was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I know this is kind of a booktube darling. This is an adult sci-fi slash fantasy novel about superheroes and supervillains and how they're formed. It kind of feels like an X-Men kind of thing. Our two main characters are college roommates and they decide they want to become extraordinaries, EOs, and have special abilities. They eventually get these abilities and then basically become supervillains and are each other's arch enemies, which is kind of an interesting plot. I gave this three stars and I enjoyed the writing style a lot. I enjoyed the characters and the story, but I really can't stand non-linear storytelling and that absolutely ruined this book for me. I do think without that this probably would have been a four stars, but it jumped between timelines a lot and I just really could not handle that. My brain is incapable of putting together the pieces if they're told to me out of order. So it was three stars. It was okay. I liked it. I'm also just not that into superheroes in general, so I feel like that was also a little bit of a detriment for me. But at the end of the day, it was a good book. I'm glad I read it. I won't be reading the sequel just because I've heard in terms of non-linear storytelling that that is much worse. So probably not my kind of thing, but I'll definitely be picking up another one of Fee Schwab's books at some point. And then I finished my audiobook for Undeniable by Bill Nye. This book is about evolution and it's basically just Bill Nye explaining evolution. I gave this book three stars, which was the same as Unstoppable, the Bill Nye book I read in April. I'm just not a big science person. I really struggle to understand science and a lot of this book went over my head. I definitely enjoyed it better than Unstoppable. I think evolution was a better concept for me to understand. It was easier for me to follow, but there was just still so much that I honestly couldn't follow. I'm very scientifically challenged, so I did struggle with that, and I think listening to it on audiobook was also probably not the best method, but I'm glad I listened to it. I do feel like I gained something from having listened to it, so that's something at least. I'll also say this book is more anti-creationism than it is pure evolution. A lot of the book is spent explaining why certain creationism theories aren't true or why they don't work, within the scientific context, and that really bored me just because I have absolutely no interest in creationism, so that got old really fast. But on a whole, if you're interested in learning more about evolution, I definitely recommend picking up this book. I think between it and Unstoppable, it was definitely the better of the two, but not for me, and I think next time I try to read a science book, I'll definitely be picking up a physical copy because it was just doing it on audiobook really didn't work for me that well. And then I read The Girls Are Gone by Michael Broadcorp and Allison Mann. I was given this book for review, which I haven't filmed the review yet, but I have posted a very long review on Goodreads if you're interested. I also read this for Cami Corners and Joni Reed's true crime read-along called Crime Scene, which I will link down below. It's super fun. We read a true crime book every other month and do a live show, and it's just a load of fun. I've really enjoyed doing it for the three months that I've done it so far this year. This is obviously a true crime book about essentially the world's messiest divorce. It, this couple does a bunch of really ridiculous stuff when they're getting divorced and it turns into a huge custody battle, at which point two of the girls disappear and this is about the case to find them. I gave this book two stars. 
I wanted to love this. Like, truly, I truly wanted to love this. Not just because it was given to me for review, but because it's about the court. This is kind of a true crime book from the perspective of the court. And that was interesting to me. I really love legal issues and true crime stuff. And that was amazing. Like, I thought that was absolutely stunning. Which I may be the only one because both Cami and Joni said that they got a little bit bored of all the court transcripts, but I never did. I thought that was amazing. But it was the rest of this book and kind of the authors themselves who kind of ruined it for me. I didn't trust the authors at the end of the day. I'm going to be doing my full review where I actually like go in depth and explain why because there's really not enough time here to explain my lack of trust. But essentially, this was written by Michael Broadcorp, who was a journalist, and Allison Mann, who was a paralegal at the law firm representing the father. And it felt like I was being explained a court case by one side's lawyers. And because of that, I didn't feel like I got the whole story. It was very one-sided. It was very biased. They never once looked critically at the father, which is not to say that I thought the mother was telling the truth because she was very clearly lying. It was illustrated at several points using court transcripts how she was just blatantly lying. I didn't have an issue with that. Like, I understood that. But the issue was that they never looked critically at any of the father's behavior, anything he said, anything he did, and it felt a little bit sketch to read. So again, I'll be doing a full review because I have a load of quotes for this and a lot that I need to talk about, but that was kind of it in essence. I really couldn't recommend this book just because of how much I didn't trust the authors, which is disappointing because I love the courtroom aspect. And then I listened to the audiobook for Just Listen by Sarah Dessen. This is a young adult contemporary novel about a young girl who was sexually assaulted and her dealing with the fallout of her friends and becoming an outcast at school and dealing with family issues. I gave this four stars. I really loved this. This was one of the Sarah Dessen books that is always like super hyped that I read and enjoyed and just never really loved. Like this is one of the classic Dessen novels. And I think upon rereading it as an adult, I really appreciate it more. This is so much about family. Sarah Dessen writes romances, and this is kind of a romance, but I felt like the romance took a backseat for a lot of this book for the family. Like, she deals with her older sister who has an eating disorder, and her other older sister who's away in New York and their relationship, and her mother who suffers from depression. And it's really interesting that the family is such the focus of this book. And I really loved Annabelle's character because Annabelle is a very passive character and it can be kind of difficult to read about passive characters because they don't initiate the story on their own. They just let things happen to them. But I felt like Sarah Deslin did a wonderful job of crafting the story around Annabelle. And I just, I love this. I'd highly recommend this book if you like kind of issue driven young adult contemporaries because this was wonderful. And I listened to the audiobook and I just loved the audiobook. I spent about five or six hours one night just lying in bed listening to it because it was so good and I enjoyed it so much. I will say the narrator tried a little bit too hard to give each character a distinct voice. Like that works for a couple of main characters but once you get into like the minor characters who only have a few lines of dialogue not everyone needs to sound very different and when you try that hard they start getting like really weird sounding voices, which was kind of amusing. But even with that, like this was wonderful. If you like listening to these kinds of things, I'd recommend this. Like I'm listening to a third Sarah Dustin novel right now and it's wonderful. Like this book was wonderful. And I finally got to A Book of American Martyrs by Joyce Carol Oates. And this is a thick one. This was about 750 pages long and I kept putting it off because I know Joyce Carol Oates is kind of tough in addition to being really long. This is an adult contemporary novel about a man who shoots up an abortion clinic. It's from the perspectives of the man who shot up the abortion clinic, his daughter, and the daughter of the abortion doctor who was shot. It kind of deals with the fallout of that, and it's not very plot driven, it's more about the characters, and I give it four stars because I just found it fascinating. I can't honestly say how much I liked it, which is how I felt about Carthage, which was the last Joyce Carol Oates book I read, but I did find it fascinating and I enjoy being fascinated by things. Her writing style is very, very odd. It's very 
convoluted and almost intentionally convoluted. Like she's trying to make it difficult to read, but I kind of liked reading it all the same. And she does go off on a great many tangents that are completely unnecessary to the story at hand. Like I feel like this book could have been told in 400 pages, just cutting out all the unnecessary stuff, like 70 pages of one character learning how to become a boxer and training and going to her first fights. Like it was just unnecessary within the story. But I still, I still enjoyed the experience of reading it. And since this is the second Joyce Carol Oates book I've given four stars, I really kind of feel like I have to say I like her now. And I have to say that I'm going to read more of her books because this definitely left me wanting to read more of her books. But I do want to add, I don't think she's as good at covering sensitive topics as she thinks she is, or as a lot of people think she is. This book felt like it kind of lacked depth in the abortion discussion. It felt like an older kind of abortion discussion and not a current one today. And I think that's partially because Joyce Carol Oates is quite old. But I, I do, I did enjoy this. And at the end of the day, my enjoyment of a book is kind of what matters. And my final May book was Brother I'm Dying by Edwidge Dantica. This is a non-fiction, memoir-ish book. It's about Edwidge Dantica growing up in Haiti, but more about her father and her uncle and their deaths. Her father got sick and died about the time that she was pregnant, and her uncle died while being detained by the American government. It was a very big deal in the early 2000s, I believe it was. I gave this book three stars. I really enjoyed the story itself, but I struggled a lot with her writing style. She has a very simplistic style that I never quite meshed very well with. It just, it felt very forced to me, and it felt too simple, and not in a very beautiful way, but just in a very basic storytelling way. It was also very sparse when it came to the storytelling. It would give you brief scenes over the course of decades to tell this story, and I kind of wish there'd been a little bit more meat to it. I really wanted to know more about their lives because I felt like I was getting the very bare bones. I much prefer a more condensed story than one like that that feels so fast because this book just, it felt way too fast for me. I wanted to get into these characters and their lives, and I never felt like I was given a chance. But I still thought it was a very worthwhile book. It was very interesting. It just wasn't for me. I do want to try more of her writing, maybe one of her novels. This just honestly wasn't everything that I hoped it was going to be. And then we get to the three books that I read on June 1st, the first of which were the Hardy Boys Undercover Brother series. I read the first two books, Extreme Danger and Running on Fumes, both by the pseudonym Franklin W. Dixon, of course. These follow Frank and Joe Hardy as they work for an organization called American Teens Against Crime. They're kind of like spies who go after criminals. The first they go to the X Games and they're undercover trying to figure out who's wreaking havoc at the X Games, and at the second they go to an eco-terrorist group and pretend to be eco-terrorists in order to figure out what they're doing wrong and who's really the villain here. I gave them both four stars. They're a lot of fun, they're kind of ridiculous, and they're not the most well-written books. I think a lot of the four stars for me comes from nostalgia, and they're fun because I'm so nostalgic for them, but I'd recommend these to kids, even if not adults. These were my favorites when I was like 10, 11. <laughs> I read so many of these, I have an entire shelf full of them, and they're just a load of fun, especially if you have a kid who's like kind of hesitant about the dated aspect of the Hardy Boys, since a lot of them are like almost 100 years old now, but really fun reads. And the final book I read was The Journal of Benikita by Barry Dinenberg. This is a middle grade historical fiction diary, part of the Dear America collection. I really love the Dear America collection. I loved it so much when I was a kid. I read all of these books. I learned so much history from them. This one in particular is about a Japanese boy in America in 1942 who winds up going to a concentration camp with his family. It's very sad. It's very heartbreaking. I gave it four stars, mostly because there is literally no arc to this book. Like, I loved reading it, but there was no arc whatsoever. It was just like a normal diary. Like, there was no climax. The story just stopped randomly, and I didn't enjoy that so much. I probably didn't mind when I was a kid, because I do remember this being one of my favorites, and I still think it's a very worthwhile book. I just wish it had had some kind of arc, because there was really no point at the end. There was nothing that was like, oh, here's like a big moment. I understand that these are diaries, so they're not going to be quite as strict to story structure, and I'm usually okay with that, but they have some kind of arc in general, and this one didn't. But 
I learned so much history from these books as a kid, and they're still so worthwhile, even as an adult, to read. Like, I still really enjoy them, and they hold up so well. So, I'm glad that I got to re-experience this one. And that ends my much more reasonable wrap-up. This might actually be about 15 minutes long, so quite excited over that. It's going to be easier to edit than my April one. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them if you have. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all again soon.